Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to design reflections for images and text in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve, so without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Alright, so let's start by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to Pages and click on Add New. We're going to give a page a name, we're just going to call this Reflection or Reflections, and then click on Use Divi Builder. Here we're going to build everything from scratch, so I'm going to go ahead and select this option. And then for the column structure, I'm going to add one single column. And in that column, we're going to add an image. So I'm going to search for it and then select it. Now let's upload our image. So I'm going to come over here and the image I'm going to go with is in my library. So I just have to scroll through and search for it. So this is the image I need to use. I'm going to click on upload an image. Now let's come over here to the design tab and update some image settings. So we're going to start off with uh, the alignment. So the module alignment needs to be centered. Next, we're going to come over here to sizing and we're going to set our max, our max width to 600 pixels. And then for our margin bottom, we're going to set this to zero. Okay, so now to create uh, this mirror effect, what we need to do is to first of all save changes and then we need to duplicate this and then rotate it so that it's facing the other way. So I'm going to come over here to the second image uh, module settings, click on design. So the first thing we're going to do here is to come over here to the image settings. So we're going to click here on filters. So here, the first thing we're going to do is to lower the opacity because when you have reflections, the opacity is typically lower. So I'm going to bring it down to about 40%. Next, in order for us to transform this, we're going to come over here to the transform tab and then we're going to do a, a, a transform scale X of 100%. In fact, it's minus 100%. So I'm going to paste it here. So as you can see, this has now uh, been transformed. So what you want to make sure you do here, because as you can see, this reflection is not reflecting what is happening here on the top. Ideally, uh, this man here needs to be directly under here. So you need to break this chain because when I entered minus 100% here, it's reflected here on the bottom as minus 100%. That's because the chain was activated. So what I need to do now is to break the chain and then just set this to 100%. And as you can see, this is looking great. Okay, so the next stage now is to add a gradient overlay. So to do that, I'm going to save this and then we're going to come over here and add a text module. So I'm just going to search for it here and select it. But the trick here is to get rid of all this text. So I'm just going to delete that. So in order for us to get our, our gradient here, we need to come over here to the background and click on the second tab, which is the gradient tab click on this plus button and start adding our colors. So my first color here is going to be fully transparent. So I'm going to click here on this icon to get rid of all the color. And then I'm going to click on the second color. And this is where this needs to be white. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. Next, we're going to come over here to sizing because we need to adjust our width. So here on the width, we're going to set this to 100%. And for the height, we're going to set it to 50%. Next, we're going to add some CSS code to add our absolute positioning. So I'm going to click on the Advanced tab, Custom CSS, and I'm going to add my CSS on the main element, just like that. Okay, so this is our first design. So let's work on a next design, just in case you want to have a darker color in the background. So I'm going to duplicate this row, and then we're just going to come over here and make some uh, updates. So first of all, I'm going to come over here to my row settings, click on Background, and add a dark background color. Next, we're going to come over here to Design, Sizing, and we're going to set our width to 100% and our max width to 100% as well. And then for the custom padding, I'm just going to come over here to Spacing. For the padding, we're going to set it to zero to the top and the bottom. Activate my chain. So this is our final result. So we're done now with this design, so I'm going to go ahead and save. Next, we're going to add, we're going to start working on our new design. And this time you need to make some reflections from, um, from text. So I'm going to click here on regular. We're going to have a single column. And in that column, we're going to add a text module. So I'm just going to select it. And over here, I'm just going to paste my word and the word is reflection. Now let's make some customizations to our text. So I'm going to come over here to the design tab and I'm going to come here to text. 
So first of all, we're going to change the font to Oswald. We're going to make the text all caps. And we're also going to change the color here and make it gray. And by the way, if you want to use the exact same settings as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. So over here, for this reflection to really work, we need to make sure that our text size is nice and big. So we're going to change this from 14 pixels to 10 VW, just like that. Next, we're going to come over here to our line height and set this to 9. For our text orientation, this needs to be centered. Now let's add some padding and also some margins. So I'm going to scroll down here and go to spacing. So here, we're going to start with our margin. So our margin bottom is going to be zero pixels and our custom padding is going to be 4VW, but this is only going to be applied to the top. So let's go ahead and save and then we need to go into the row settings. So I'm going to click here on the, this gear icon to enter my row settings. Click on design, sizing. So the first thing we're going to do here is to make sure we don't have any space on the side. So we're going to set our gutter width. But before we set it, we have to make sure that we activate it. So I'm going to click here on use custom gutter width. And I'm going to reduce this to one. And then over here on the width, I'm going to set my width here to 100%. And I'm also going to set my max width to 100%. So that means that our design is going to go from edge to edge. Next, we're going to go to our custom padding. And here we're going to set our padding to zero to the top and the bottom. So this makes sure that we don't have any space uh, on the top and the bottom. Now, while we're here on the row settings, the next stage is to add our background image. So I'm going to come over here to content, click on background. And then I'm going to click here on this third tab and click this plus button. So the image I'm going to use is this one right here. Click upload an image. So as you can see, my image has now been added onto my design. So that's looking great. Now we need to create the reflection text. So I'm going to save this. So the next stage now is to create the reflection text. So to, in order for us to create this, we need to duplicate the entire row. Okay, so now that we've duplicated this row, so the next stage is to reflect it. So I'm going to come over here to design, transform. So and we as we did before in the first example, we need to break this chain and set minus 100% over here. And now you can see we have a perfect reflection. And over here, we just leave it as it is as 100%. But of course, this is not done yet because we need to uh, reduce the opacity to just make it look realistic. So let's go ahead and add a text uh, module. So I'm going to save this. So we're going to add a text module by clicking this plus button and searching for it. In fact, here it is. I'm going to select it. And as we did before, we don't need all this text, so I'm going to delete it. Next, I'm going to come over here to background, click on the second tab to add our gradient. And our first color here is going to be white on our gradient. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And my second color here is going to be a transparent color. But you know what? It's a specific value. So... I am going to paste it between these brackets here. And as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I'll leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so now that I've added this, the next stage now is to add our start and end position. So I'm going to scroll down here. So our start position here needs to be set to 38%. And then for our width, we're going to set this to 100% both to... In fact, let me come over here to sizing. So over here, this needs to be 100%. And for the max width, it's going to be 100% as well. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because realistically, it needs to span a whole, I mean, across the water here so that it looks realistic. Now, we're going to add our CSS code to add the, uh, the absolute positioning. So I'm going to click here on advanced custom CSS, and then I'm going to paste my code in here. So as you can see now, this has now brought these... Uh, to text together. Okay, so let's save and let's do a quick preview of our final design. So I'm going to save here and exit the Visual Builder. And this is what it looks like. So this is our first design. And this is our second version with a dark background. And then this is the final one on the water. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.